Today I'm going to show you how to build a stair handrail using only poplar wood and some rebar spindles here. This is one of my more intricate custom designs here so there's quite a few steps although it looks fairly simple but I'll break it down for you step by step so watch this video till the end. This rail has been up now for almost five months and this is an Airbnb property at the entrance of my house. This gets used by hundreds of people now already, kids and everything and it's still as sturdy as the day I built it, which I didn't really have doubts about that in the first place, and you'll see why throughout this build. But let's get into it right after you hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. Let's go. This is by far the most expensive wood I've ever purchased, so I'm measuring everything like 10 times. What is this saying? Measure twice, cut once. I'm measuring a ton of times and then doing one cut. So I have these cut into the lengths I want. This is 75 inches for the top and bottom plate. Um, this one is just the remnants of that. Now I'm going to rip it dead center. This is about eight inches wide. So I'm gonna rip it into basically four inch section by four inch sections. I have a really old table saw here, so it's not gonna give me the best cut, but this is supposed to look kind of rustic anyway. For a railing to be in code, it has to be anywhere from 34 to 36 inches high, something like that. Check your own building requirements or your own building codes. But that's what I had in my notes as something I looked up before. So I'm gonna make this about 36 inches high just to be on the safe side of that. Wear protective gear. All right, I'm gonna go with my typical sanding strategy, starting with 80 grit sandpaper as my first run to really just get all the big chunks and, and stuff off of there. And round out a lot of the edges too. These have some sharp edges on there. And then I'm gonna go with the 220 grit sandpaper just to really smooth it out and make it that little extra fine detail. And it makes it easier to dust and clean later in the future. So I've never done this before, but I really love the look of rounded edges. And I usually just sand the edges down to get that rounded look, but this wood is a little bit harder than the wood I'm used to working with. So what I'm using is a planer, scrap piece of wood here, and I was really able to just round this out and then I'll come back and smooth it out with the sander. So I'm gonna go ahead and round out the edges the rest of the way now with the planer on the minimum setting. No two situations are going to be exactly the same. So if you're following along here, just know that you're gonna have some variations such as the length, the width, all your dimensions for the most part, except for the height, the code is pretty strict on that uh, nationwide. But in a case like this where I'm getting the width of the sill, you can see right here that this board, my sill, my bottom plate, is a little bit wider than the hole here. You see it doesn't rest in there, right? I did that on purpose this time because I thought it would look a little bit cleaner if I notched out this little corner here and had it overhang the flooring. And that way it would just be a nice seamless transition. I don't even necessarily need to caulk this, the gap right there. This is just gonna look a bit, little bit cleaner, I think. And uh, yeah, and then that way I get a chunkier piece of wood too. I don't have to narrow this down as much. And I think it's gonna look a lot nicer.
problem setting my post on the bottom plate and marking those posts. This will help me find my exact length in between the end posts so I can begin finding out how many little spindles I'll actually need. The code says you can't have a wider gap than four inches between the spindles, so I'm going with four inches exactly here. The width of the spindle is about half an inch, so my gap in between these will actually be less than that four inches and up to code. Now I'm gonna mark the exact center using this triangle so they're all spaced evenly in the middle of the board as well as in between each other. Then I'm gonna nail set these holes that I've marked so that way the drill bit will actually go into the holes and not slip and slide to the side. These need to be pretty accurate. So I went out and bought a small piece of rebar of the right size I want, which is half inch. Now I'm gonna drill out some test holes to make sure I get the right, really tight fit on this. And this is a scrap piece of wood here. Logically, this is half inch. I'm gonna start with the half inch drill bit. And I'm doing this step again because my wood was $200. I don't wanna mess this up. Pretty tight. wiggle it around a little bit. There we go, that's nice and snug right there. So I'm going with the half inch drill bit. One more step I'm gonna take, this is my real piece of wood here, my real sill. I'm gonna take a medium sized drill bit, this is three and sixteenths, and get little starter holes going. So that way this tip doesn't bounce or slide around on these holes, even though I've already nail punched these in, it's a huge difference from this half inch drill bit here to the little holes that I nail punched. Here I go. I'm gonna try to make these as straight as I can. Oh, I need to mark with tape how deep I want these poles to go. So let me go do that calculation. Usually I'd mark this with blue painter's tape, but I can't find any of mine. So I want it to go about right here. really nasty day so pardon the fog on the camera here what I'm gonna do is start getting my holes ready for assembling these pieces so I can sand it again one last time and stain it and that way it'll stain the holes that I penetrate through so there won't be any original raw wood poking through I'll show you what I mean these are my railing post and this is the back side of them I'm gonna Craig jig two holes on the top of each one and these will fasten into my handrail. Now there's many ways you can fasten this together depending on your situation. If you're going really long with your railing, you wanna have as much support and bracketing as you possibly can. So along with the Craig screws and wood glue when I eventually fasten it, I'm also going to put this L bracket in between my Craig screws right here. So I basically have three different methods of support. If in the future this gets wobbly, again the handrail's going here, I can run a really long lag bolt or something there, paint it black and decorate it, whatever. Uh, there's many ways you can do this. This is the way I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna mark an inch from each end here for my Craig screw holes. One inch, one inch. All right, and I already got these two marked. So I'm ready to Craig screw those out. And then I'm just gonna trace around this L bracket so I have a template here. I like to overbuild everything I do, so that's why I'm doing this whole combination with Craig screws, L bracket, wood glue, you name it. So I've set my post here just so I can kind of see how this is going to look visually. This is the front where you first walk in. And this will be the most visible side here. 
and then this will be the visible side of this post with the back being against the wall you won't see that so again my pretty face here pretty face on this side and then I found this little bracket in my shed here and I think it's gonna be really helpful again you could do this a million different ways but I think this is gonna be perfect it'll it'll allow me to have this little L corner here and what I'm planning on doing is I have these lag bolts here this is about seven or eight inches long and I was just gonna place it here you know in between here but now with this L bracket that I found I can actually put this through there and it'll go down into my floor about that thick and I'll place one here and I have another bracket there which I'll place here again without this you can still do it like that and I'll be fastening this post in with a little skinnier bolt here going up through that way so this will be installed as a u-shaped item that I can then set the rebar in once this is installed in place and then fasten the top on once all the rebar and everything is in place at the house stained ready to go so this can come in as one solid piece and then the top railing and the rebar come in separately later So I'm guessing this is a quarter inch lag bolt because I have a quarter inch drill bit here that matches it. So I'm gonna use this to drill out two holes on each end of my sill plate. Now I'm going to flip it over and drill a shallow hole that's just wide enough to hold the head of this bolt so the bolt will be flush with this. You don't want the bolt resting like, like that, right? Because then you stick off the ground the thickness of this head. You want this head to be flush inside the wood. So I basically need to drill out a little hole that fits the head there. For these brackets, I'm gonna use a, I think it's called a pan head, and it's where it's flush underneath. You don't want the curved cone shaped screw because you want it to be flat against the metal. If you have a cone, it doesn't really grab it as snug. So you want something like that. And this is probably a good number 10. So it's a good size, it's pretty hefty. There's gonna be four of them each on here. And since I traced the holes here already on my post, I'm gonna go ahead and drill out the holes so these are all ready to go too for my screws. Let me explain really quick another method and sorry about the wind if that's getting y'all. So this is my post, right? Let's say this is the end of my sill. If you don't have something crazy like this or you can't find out the store, Again, I'm going to bolt this from the sill up into the post, but I could also Craig screw this down into this sill and bolt it up. That's a combination. I could bolt it up and then put, I don't know, two of these, I don't know where my other L bracket is. Put an L bracket there and an L bracket here. Do something like that, like, and then bolt downs just straight through the wood into your sill here. Doesn't matter, as long as you have a big washer too, you're set. I mean, there's a, a hundred ways to mount this, right? This is just a crazy cool bracket I found. Now I'm gonna pre-drill from the bottom of my sill up into my post. The last part of this step is drilling two holes into my back post. This is the post that'll go against the wall and I need to fasten it to the wall. I have two bolts here with washers. I'm just gonna space them evenly on this board about a third in from the bottom and a third in from the top. 
and uh, just pre-drill that and drill that through the holes uh, against the stud in my walls. I'm gonna do about seven inches in and seven inches in. Here's a quick rundown now that everything is ready to go and stained and all that, right? So we have the front post here. All my holes line up with my bracket and my two holes up top for my L bracket here. All my holes are good here. And let's see, all my holes align here with this bracket. So we're good there. I have my post hole to go into the wall, my post hole to go into the wall, and then two little holes for my L bracket up here. So all in all, I think we're ready. I have my top board right in here. So even with the run through, I forgot to do the Craig jig holes. Remember these were on the tops of my post where the L bracket is. I left all my scrap wood out in the rain so I can't test on any of that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my bottom piece here and just stain the bottom part and test out different colors or different, whether I use pre-stain or not, or maybe I just clear coat it straight up because I do like the color of this. This was a pretty quick decision here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna clear coat this raw original color look with just a matte finish clear coat by Minwax. Now it's time to grind the actual rebar here. I have my grinder. Definitely need hearing protection and most important, importantly, you need some eye protection. I've seen a lot of videos on reels, Instagram reels and TikToks and stuff. I don't have a TikTok, but you know what I mean. All that stuff where discs are flying into people's face shields and stuff. So be very careful with this. So my posts are 30 inches tall and then my hole is an inch and a half deep, give or take. And then the upper holes are another inch and a half. So I'm making this 32 and three quarters long. So it'll fit flush on the very bottom hole, an inch and a half. And then it'll just go into the top hole about an inch, which will give me room to work with. So 32 and three quarters. So after Sean cuts it, I'm taking mineral spirits and trying to get all of the rust and stains off of the rebar so that we can clear coat it and make a nice clean look. I'm going to attach everything now using some liquid nails to connect the pieces and then screw in the long lag bolts. Instead of playing actual music here, let's just listen to the sweet, sweet sound of the drills. I'll constantly be checking to make sure this is level as I go so it'll be easy to assemble all the rebar later. And additionally, when screwing in all these bolts and screws, it chips some of the black paint off so I'll have to come back and touch this up later.
After putting liquid nails on a couple of these, I found it was easier to actually stick the liquid nails directly into the holes. And I probably put a little more than I should have. Some of it started squeezing out. So just put a little dab of it and you should be good. After about five minutes of trying to fit this top on, we realized it wasn't going to fit, so I made the holes a little deeper and wider. I did end up puncturing a hole all the way through the top, but I'll fill it in with wood filler later. All that's left to do is touch up paint these brackets, sand off the top wood filler on my mistake, and recoat with the finish, and we are good to go. Hey, although I didn't build this today, it's really hot, so I'm sweating. It's as if I was building it with you this whole time. This is the rebar handrail build, so thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you like this. If you did, show your support for free by hitting that like button down below. Again, we use poplar wood here along with some rebar spindles. All the dimensions, all of that will be linked down in the description below. If you end up trying to build this or you have other steps that you would add or take away from this project, let me know let me know down in the comments below thank you so much i'll see you all on the next video